Hey guys, today we're driving the 2022 Audi S3, a car I've been very excited to get behind the wheel of. We have a 306 horsepower, two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine that's mated to Audi's fantastic dual clutch seven speed automatic. Oh yes, we have a very nice interior. This S3 starts around $45,000. This has the premium plus package. I'll uh, include all the specs and options in the description of this video. But as tested, this car is about $55,000. We already filmed a POV night driving video on this Audi S3 with some first impressions behind the wheel and a little bit of a winter driving, which was fun. Today, we're gonna be walking around this in the daylight, showing you what it looks like inside and out. We'll take it for a drive and hopefully give you guys some final thoughts on this S3. Do I like this as much as the Golf R? Is it better than the Golf R? How excited am I for the RS3? Very. All right, let's start from the outside. We'll walk you around this thing. I really do think this S3 looks pretty good. Pretty conservative from a design standpoint. It doesn't have the crazy blacked out front grille from the RS3 that we've seen in Europe. A nice middle child between the A3 and the RS3, which is kind of the uh, theme of this video. Here's the trunk space, miniaturized, but still functional and usable. No spare tire, unfortunately. You get an inflation kit and a battery in the back. Love these exhaust tips, blacked out, a little bit beefier. Nice little exhaust note from this S3 too. We have some pops and bangs uh, under downshifts in dynamic mode in this. Sounds pretty good. Love the lighting. This is kind of uh, the perfectly sized smaller sport sedan. Um, it's nimble, it's spacious enough on the interior, but it's just kind of a nice little package. Unfortunately, we don't get the S3 hatchback in the United States, but this sedan, I think, is a nice compromise. We've got a little bit more rear legroom than we used to, and uh, the rear seats are actually quite comfy. I'll sit behind myself at my 5'10 driving position. <clears throat> I had my son back here in his rear-facing car seat, and I had to push that passenger seat forward quite a bit to get him to fit, but uh, in a pinch, I think it would work, and you can fit adults back here relatively comfortably, too. It's tight, but not as tight as it used to be. Love this interior. Super high-quality materials. Really nice accents. I mean, this is Audi at their best, and for starting price of $45,000, this interior is fantastic. And the driving experience here is even better. God, I love the stitching on these seats. Got a couple of nice cup holders right here. Everything feels very solid and well-made. Lots of USB-C ports. We've got a couple up front, a couple out back. Little rear climate control vents. Everything's just slightly miniaturized in this S3 but I'm not seeing a lapse in quality here compared to some of Audi's higher end models. And I really appreciate that. We recently drove the BMW M240i and I found a similar thing with that car. This though, I think has better steering. The all wheel drive system is not as rear biased, but it's still a very fun and very satisfying car to drive. Ah, which would I choose as a daily driver? That's actually a really tough call. This new S3 is so, so good. All right, so a few more informational tidbits about this car. We have 19 inch wheels on this. Today we have Pirelli Sato Zero winter tires. The 19s are an optional extra. If you live in the Midwest or the North where there are potholes and rough roads, I would highly not recommend these 19s. They are not pothole friendly at all. Uh, these sidewalls are super thin and I actually already got my loan delayed on this car because it hit a pothole and destroyed a wheel and tire. Uh, there is a standard 18 inch wheel option. I would definitely swing for that and get as much sidewall on these cars as you possibly can. It's rated for 23 miles to the gallon in the city, 32 miles to the gallon on the highway. Direct injection, looks pretty good. Get a little bit of room to work around it too in this engine bay. Made it with this dual clutch, this is a fantastic powertrain. I actually think it's a little bit more responsive, engaging, and it sounds better than the Golf R. Interesting difference between this and the Golf R is this S3 retains the traditional Haldex all-wheel drive system that Audis have had in the past. 
and the Golf R adds that trick limited slip differential in the rear that can have yaw control and send power to the right or left of that rear axle. Um, so a little bit of a disadvantage with this S3 considering the Golf R and this are about the same starting price point. But I think the interior and the usability and functionality of this S3 is far, far better than the Golf R's. Um, this interior is a really nice space from a quality standpoint. In ergonomics, we have a lot more physical controls and buttons. We have actual switches for climate control, and they make a really nice sound. They have a nice tactility to them. We have a clear display that shows us our temperatures, our heated seat function. One thing I'm missing in this S3 is a heated steering wheel this week. We have the same little tiny shifter down here. Standard reverse camera, nothing special. Parking sensors, again, not a huge deal. This touchscreen is really nice too. Similar layout to what Audi's doing with the rest of their vehicles. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto functionality. Seems to work pretty well. This week I've had an issue with Siri actually recognizing and hearing my voice, but phone calls have a bit of a problem. You have a home button to the left of the screen and a few quick access controls right here. I actually really like this infotainment. Really my only complaint is that to dim the gauge cluster at night, you have to go into the settings, display and brightness, and hit the dimmer switch right here. There's no physical button and there's no quick swipe down from the top menu that I've found. Um, yeah, it's all just kind of a couple, couple inputs into the menu. Um, otherwise, I think this interior is great. Got your standard crumb collector down here in the seats. These seats are very comfortable, very supportive. They have a nice S logo on the top there. Pretty big sunroof here. Really nice LED interior lighting. See that at night. These slide. I just feel cozy and, uh, I don't know, well settled into this cockpit. It's not a tight space, but it's not huge. It feel, I feel like it fits me really well. Um, Really nice sound system too. This is a Bang & Olufsen, and we'll test that at the end of this video. One more note before we go for a drive, we have this fully digital gauge cluster. We have a couple different view options. We can see this view, or just information overload. Uh, there's a lot going on in this view, so I think we're gonna go back to our first option. On the left side of the screen, we can customize what we see. We can see fuel economy, short-term, long-term, what music we're playing, any warning messages from our phone, navigation. I think we're just gonna leave it on driving assistance. There we go. And we actually have an oil temperature gauge right down here. It says we're at 162 degrees Fahrenheit. A little bit more driving and we'll be good to get into boost. All right, guys, let's uh, bring up Waze and we'll set off. We'll start off in automatic drive mode we have the options between comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual. You get a little bit more of an aggressive engine note in dynamic. And this two liter turbo sounds really good in this S3. It's actually maybe one of my favorite two liter turbo sounds on the market. Yes, it's a little bit piped in. Yes, it's a little bit artificial, similar to the Sound Doctor that Volkswagen Group has used in the past, but I think it kind of sounds like a five cylinder. Yeah. This is a healthy 306 horsepower from this engine. Pretty responsive, not a lot of turbo lag. And the seven speed dual clutch is perfection. Let's put us into dynamic mode. Sounds better, is more entertaining for the video. You can hear we get a little bit of a pop from the exhaust back there. quality, the suspension tuning, all excellent here. Really nice ride handling balance from this S3.
lot of fun to use the paddles too. We've got a traction control button. Go figure, look at that. It's quick. I love the steering in this S3. Super light at low speeds, weights up beautifully around corners, and it actually has a decent amount of feel to it. More so, I think, than the Golf R. Definitely more so than the M240i that we drove recently. Guys, I gotta be honest, driving this S3 really, really makes me want an RS3 as a daily driver someday. It is as close to perfect, I think, as it gets for a vehicle of this type. I don't think this new S3 has gotten boring. If anything, it's just gotten better and better and better. Audi does such a nice job with the refinement of their vehicles. There's no rattles in here. Everything visually is very interesting and very just nice looking. Really my only major complaint about this car are these dang 19 inch wheels. If Volkswagen is waging a war on buttons, Audi seems to be waging a war on tires and uh, trying to just get rid of them completely because the sidewall is almost non-existent on these tires. It's pretty bad. Yeah, I would definitely swing for a set of 18-inch wheels if you're getting an S3 and you don't live somewhere with perfect roads. One pothole and uh, you're stranded because you don't have a spare tire. Every large pothole you hit in this S3 is a bit of a cringe moment because it makes a lot of noise. It's rim on road contact and it's never pleasant. absolutely a weapon in the winter on a proper set of winter tires it's unstoppable super capable in the snow still really fun to drive in the dry these Pirellis always have a little bit more of a performance oriented compound too they're good enough in the snow but they don't really detract from dry driving grip and performance and I appreciate that Even in manual mode, this car does have a kick down switch with the throttle pedal. But even in manual, at red line, it'll automatically upshift into the next gear. Let's talk about this all wheel drive system. So, in the snow, for inclement winter weather driving, I would chalk this all-wheel drive system and the Golf R's as equal. You're not really going to want to use drift mode in the winter. That's more of a dry grip oriented driving mode uh, that will over rotate that outside rear wheel in the Golf R and give you just a little bit more rotation on throttle. In the snow, you're going to want to just use traditional all-wheel drive and that's what this Quattro 
Audi S3 has. But in the dry, I think this has a little bit more understeer than the Golf R. It's not as dialed in. The suspension is a little bit softer. It's a little bit more comfortable to drive, but it's still very capable. And yeah, there's a little bit of understeer here at the limit, a little bit more body roll. But unless if you're racing, you really don't notice a difference. And, and I think some of the advantages that come with living with this S3 on a daily basis really kind of make up for that performance differential. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. For the same price, I would absolutely have this S3 over the Golf R. And I, I realize that that's not really going to work for everyone. Some people want that hatchback functionality and that extra space in the Golf R. And I've got to say, I do wish Audi offered the S3 hatch in the US, but I understand that this is kind of a differentiating factor between this and the Golf R, and that makes sense. This is such a nice car to live with, though, and the functionality here, the usability, the interior quality, and the feel of everything is just, it's an Audi, and it feels it feels that next level, that next echelon of quality, even if the performance maybe suffers just a smidge, like 5%. <laughs> Let's hit one more entrance ramp on the way back, and we'll talk about adaptive cruise control. All right, so dynamic mode, traction off. Can we get another launch controlled start out of this? Let's see. Clutch just needed to warm up a little bit. That was fun. Cool. Oh, you guys, this thing is good. This S3 is really good. I love the way it sounds. It's exciting. It doesn't sound fake. So many other manufacturers could take a page out of Audi's notebook here and just making a nice sounding turbocharged four cylinder. All right, settling down on the highway, we'll put us into comfort mode here gauge cruise control. This is the same cruise control stock that Audi has used in their vehicles for quite a while. We can control our following distance very easily with this switch on the side and we can skip, this is kind of fun, two and a half mile an hour increments with every press. And if you want to just speed up really quickly, you can just hold the stock and it'll raise your speed very fast. Uh, but this 2.5 mile an hour increment change is really neat because you can go from 75 miles an hour to 77.5 miles an hour and that's just kind of it's kind of cool it's different and I, I like it you can also quickly turn on and off your adaptive cruise with lane guidance right here so it'll, it has a lane centering system with this premium plus package and uh, it works quite well it does prompt you to put your hands on the steering wheel about every 10 seconds or so but when it's active, it seems to do a pretty nice job of navigating highways, freeways, slight turns. Definitely something you want to keep an eye on, but uh, it's a nice system on first impressions. I think I would probably want an S3 with this spec. Trying to follow at the closest following distance here with adaptive cruise. If I just put a little bit of weight on the steering wheel with one of my hands, it doesn't seem to prompt me with steering assistance too much. And if you want to turn that system off, it's just a quick press of the button on the side of the stock right here. Let's see how quickly we pass slow traffic. So we're set to 80 miles an hour, cruise control at 70, accelerating. I'm not pushing anything. It's the car accelerating on its own. It's about average. It's a little bit more conservative, but it's getting up to speed at a reasonable rate. I don't feel like I'm going to be holding back traffic in this S3.
wind noise, road noise, all pretty good. We've got a little bit of tire roar from these winter tires, but that's to be expected on ultra smooth pavement. Yeah, you guys, if I had a little bit higher of a budget this year for a daily driver, I would actually consider an S3. This fits and just checks all my boxes. I really, really, really like this car. I like it a lot. Um, yes, it's not as exciting or dynamic or hoonable as a BMW or a rear-wheel drive option, but it just kind of does everything well, but it still remains entertaining. One of the biggest problems I always had with my GTI was that it was a bit boring. You couldn't completely turn everything off. I had a Mark 6, I had a 2010 GTI, and it was so good, it was a bit dull. This remains very, very good, but still exciting. That launch control feature back there was awesome. Engine sounds great. I don't know, this is just a really nice overall package, and I, I love what Audi has done here. Well done, bravo. It doesn't even seem to understeer too badly on these winter tires. Yeah, the only other thing that would hold me back on a car like this is a lack of a spare tire. That's a bit of a bummer. But get a good AAA membership or a good uh, towing package deal from the dealer, and uh, you're probably in good shape. There are honestly very few vehicles on sale today that do come with a spare tire. Unfortunately, it's just something of the past. I mean, if you think about it, I've really only been left stranded once in the last decade, and uh, a spare tire came in handy. I wasn't that far from home. Worst case scenario, if you're going on a long, long road trip, you could always put a compact spare, uh, have some type of solution in the trunk for uh, if you get stranded. There are aftermarket options out there. What do you think? Launch controlled start into a corner? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, some final thoughts. What do I like about this S3? It talks to you. It's gruff, it's a little bit rugged, but it's so refined. It, it's just like a, it's like a nicely tailored suit. It reminds me a little bit of what Porsche is doing with some of their performance cars. It just feels right. Everything here is as it should be. I feel like as car reviewers, we have to kind of review and evaluate cars for their intended purpose. And I feel like this S3 achieves its intended purpose about as well as it possibly could. I have a few little complaints here and there, but they're not, they're not deal breakers, they're not huge issues. No car is perfect. This S3, I think it's pretty darn close. I really have enjoyed my time in this this week and it's making me consider buying one someday or getting an RS3. I'd love to have a five cylinder uh, RS3, that would be just, so cool. Can't, I'm so excited to drive that car when it comes out later this year. Yeah. All right. So anyway, what are your guys' thoughts? Uh, personally, I put this over the Golf R. The interior here, the functionality, the lack of all the stupid haptic buttons is a real incentive, I think, to go for the S3 over the Golf R. Everything else is a positive. The interior is nicer. The driving experience, I think, is a little bit more fun and engaging. The steering's better. It's an Audi, so you get kind of that just extra niceness and luxuriousness out of the out of the daily experience with the car. Yes, it's not as spacious. It's not as practical. But this S3, the added back seat room, I think is helpful in uh, making the case for this as a as the only car. Let's say you've got a family or a small family and you've got a bigger vehicle 
this could be your daily driver and if you needed to transport the kids in the back in a pinch you could yeah this would work for me thanks for watching um probably one of my favorite cars i've driven so far in 2022 i am surprised i was not expecting to like this s3 as much as i do and uh i am so excited for the rs3 that's going to be cool i've actually never driven an rs3 excited to see what a modern five-cylinder turbo sounds like because it's the only one if you haven't already go check out the pov night drive where we slide this around in the snow a little bit it was uh in the middle of an ice storm and i could barely keep the windshield defrosted but uh, we got some good driving in this thing and this car is a blast in the snow it's super capable super buttoned down in the dry and in the snow it turns into a bit of a hooligan super quick off the line tons of traction um yeah a fun car all right that's it for this one thanks for watching guys we'll see you later take care your mobile device is still in the vehicle oh yeah and mobile device lady always tells you that it's probably a setting to turn that off somewhere but haven't found it yet Love some of the lines with this gray too. It's just subtle, subdued, not shouty, but a great, great driving experience. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? A sound system test. Let's listen to this bang and all of some video is, video is gonna go for a little bit longer. <laughs> instantly look at that amazing all right so sound system playlist we have this little volume touch slider down here which is actually kind of nice it works well you can mute quickly change tracks quickly and then you have volume controls and track selection controls which are physical buttons and and uh, switches on the steering wheel
So nothing revolutionary about the Bang & Olufsen sound system in here, but it's still, it's pretty good. It feels about right, sounds about right for a $50,000 Audi of this, uh, of this class. So anyway, hopefully that gives you a good idea of the sound system and the crazy traction you can get on the snow and ice in this car. That's the end of the video, for real. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.